I'm Caleb with Main Switch Shop and today I've got a pretty cool project for you. Aside from woodworking, one thing I really like doing is collecting Star Wars stuff. Helmets especially. This is the extent of my collection so far. I've got the Hasbro Black Series Stormtrooper helmet based off the Rogue One design. I have the Hero style helmet from Episode 4. And I've got this custom helmet that I, I designed. Just my own original design of like a an Imperial Commando or something. But today, I'm finally adding in a piece to the collection that I've been wanting to add in for a long time. My own custom Mandalorian helmet. Check it out. And this is a Mando kit I got from a shop on Etsy that is no longer open. I'm not sure why. It seems like a really good kit to me. It did not come with a rangefinder, which I'm okay with because I want to take some inspiration from the Mandalorian, who did not have a rangefinder either, and implement that into my helmet. And I've been watching so much of The Mandalorian. I love that show. I've seen the whole season already. It has inspired me to make my own custom Mandalorian helmet. So this is all based on my own design, my own color scheme and stuff. The first order of business is cutting and trimming and sanding. And you'll see all this excess stuff here around the helmet. That is called flashing. And it happens when you do a slush mold. A slush mold is where he has a mold of a helmet. You dump your resin in and you rotate it around to get the resin spread everywhere and you do it layer by layer. I don't have a coping saw anymore, so I really don't know what I'm going to use to cut off this flashing. So I'm just going to experiment around and see what I come up with. Alright, this is a procedure that most cosplayers I've seen will do with like a rotary tool and a little blade on it. I don't have that. I do have my jigsaw and I did a little test cut to cut off the flashing and that seems to be working. It's really scary. I'm gonna try that. I'm sure any actual cosplayers that are watching this video are probably cringing their teeth to find powder, but... This is getting me anxiety. So this process is taking a really long time. What I'm doing is I've got an assortment of files, sandpaper, and it's just all those cuts that I made have to now be cleaned up and things have to look right. For me, this is the most enjoyable part. I find that once I finish a helmet and it's totally done, it just kind of just sits on a shelf or somewhere and is, is displayed, and this is the part that I really like doing. I'm not too involved in the cosplay world and that sort of thing. I know a little bit about it. Um, I've seen a lot of people say online, say that you shouldn't buy armor kits or helmet kits from people on eBay or Etsy. And I don't really know why that is because I'm not that involved in a cosplay online community. I think from the context I could pick up is there's a lot of scalpers out there that will sell you kits for way more than where you could get it from somebody else. I think there's people out there known to take other people's work and reproduce it. It's really confusing and it goes really in depth. So I would say just buy at your own discretion and really research. Don't pick one and then just roll with it. And if, you, if you're making like a Mandalorian helmet like this, if you dinged up anything in your process of cutting, that's a great uh, way to just cover it up by making it look like some kind of battle damage or something. Before I start any actual painting, I'm gonna put a coat of primer over this. Once that primer dries, then we could do the real fun stuff. I'm gonna do a base coat of silver over the whole helmet is I actually want some of this primer to show through. A lot of people will use liquid latex. I'm gonna use this art masking fluid, which I tested, and it seems to work just as well. I've got a toothpick that I'm just gonna use to apply this. It's really easy to forget where you put this stuff once you get paint over it. So 
some people shred up masking tape and just put it on in a random configuration and use that to simulate paint chips. I personally think that this masking stuff and liquid latex makes a more realistic looking paint chip effect. <laughs> So now you can see where that masking fluid is. You could just gently rub it off with your fingers and you get that and it makes pretty good paint chips. So you can see that my paint job is pretty much complete. I did the same exact steps that I did previously, just masking stuff on, putting the masking liquid on, painting it, wiping it off, just like the last steps. The paint job is not complete just yet because we need to do some additional weathering. And all I'm using for that is some black and brown acrylic paints. The way I like to do my weathering is to use a totally wet brush. And you're going to need some paper towels too. And really what you're going to do is you're just going to get that brown paint on there. Really just go over your whole piece pretty much with this. That little bit of brown is going to get into cracks, into crevices. And then before it even has a chance to dry, you just wipe it off. And after we get just these washes on here, I'll show you how you can hide little defects like where some of this yellow managed to seep through my masking tape. So now I'm switched to a dry brush. I'll get a little bit on my brush and I'll actually get most of it off. I'll just dab over that. And just in all the spots that are like that, we could do that and cover up where that paint leaked through. So I've got this makeshift visor that I made that I'm gonna put in here for the time being and it's only gonna be in there temporarily I'm ordering a proper lens to put in here but and I'm gonna see how it works out with hot glue first and there we go this visor is definitely going to be temporary. Uh, it's a soda bottle with car tint over it. And it's it works fine for now, but I definitely want to get a proper visor over it. I really like it. I still need to put some foam on the inside so it sits a little better on the head. Visibility is good. It's a lot easier to see out of than these. I promise you that. Actually, these two aren't that bad. This one with the bubble lenses is pretty hard to see out of. I don't know if y'all can hear me very good in that. I'm really happy with how this came out. I think this is probably the best weathering I've done on a helmet. This guy came out pretty good. So if you liked and enjoyed this project, give it a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe to this channel because I have brand new videos twice a week, Wednesday and Friday. I'll probably be back with you next Friday with another woodworking project. But I would like to do more stuff like this as well in the future. So if you like the expansion into this kind of territory, then let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Remember, this is the way.